Remember hearing about Google Fiber being announced as crazy affordable and fast gigabit internet? We also heard about it hitting Austin at some point, and then pow! AT&T just hit them suckers in the damn face. Basically, AT&T just announced Wednesday that they too will be offering ultra high speed internet service in our parts people hometown, Austin. Keep Austin weird. I for one can keep Austin normal. Quick reminder, this kind of service means speeds up to a gigabit per second, 100 times faster than average broadband in US. Now, Austinites, not all of us will have the super fast internet speeds. Those of you who will will probably be in them rich folk category. Also, with both AT&T and Google Fiber, it is up to them to decide actually where they can deploy their own service. Seriously, passing poor and rural areas by. I'm not being a skeptic, like, I read that. Everything you read on the internet is the truth. This kind of sucks. This will make even a wider gap in the digital divide in Austin, or across the country if the same neighborhood picking tactics are used. Man, that's all kind of bumming me out. Yeah, fast internet. Yeah, yeah, blah, cool, okay. But guess what? Ryder Sherman from the Wall Street Journal said, I don't care if poor areas won't get the faster service. I'm interested that the technology is going to become available and where it will be available. Jerk. Okay, no more negative. This is cool. A visor paired with some neat Google Glass-like spectacles has the ability to translate foreign signs and menus with a head-mounted AR gadget, which was recently shown at a showcase event in Japan. Remember translation books for the common tourist? Okay, hold on, let me find these words and try to say them to you embarrassingly bad. Or the great and powerful translation apps like Siri or Android where you can pick the language to translate to, talk, and then it speaks back to you. Well, this is better. Because when you put on the spectacles, it enables instant language translation for users traveling abroad who need to read menus or other documents. They are connected to cloud where Japanese, Chinese, Korean, and English languages are available to be translated. By overlaying the user's first language onto unfamiliar text, it instantly becomes a translated and understandable menu or sign. The invention becomes especially useful for those who travel beyond the most touristy points of Japan or other Nido country, where foreign language menus and other documents are rarely found. Another thing about this, don't sweat if you pull that infamous, I cannot believe I forgot their name again, I met them twice already, phenomenon. I swear there's this one person that I've met like 15 times, or at least talked to that many times, still don't know her name, and it's like that Seinfeld episode, you miss that threshold. Like, you cannot ask. That's just embarrassing. These glasses use facial recognition to pull up details of a person in view by request including job information and name, all by using smartphone servers. So basically, you can kind of like spy on them just to remember their name, I guess. That's nice. As you may notice, they're anything but trendy looking, or for some of you, they're sexy as hell. I don't know. But they still have seven years in the works until they will be released to the public. You know John McAfee, known for the antivirus software? Well, he recently revealed details on his upcoming gadget that will block the NSA from your internet activity. Now, a lot of speculation has been going on with McAfee. People say he's on bath salts. I don't know why anyone would say that. But, mm, he also hangs out with young girls. Loves hallucinogens, but found yoga 30 years ago and fought that addiction. Let's just say I had a hard time finding a good picture of this dude. Well, I'm making that a simple side note because this is about tech. <laughs> Dubbed Decentral, the gadget serves to communicate with tablets, smartphones, and laptops as a way to decentralize networks so they are incapable of being accessed by government entities. Effectively, it will work by creating small local area private networks where communication and sharing is completely anonymous. Described as almost a dark web, it is another layer into the internet, 
a lower and very private layer. By decentralizing networks, you are essentially using floating and moving local networks within a range of about three blocks. This does in fact mean that your network will be constantly changing, but that is how every uplink and downlink becomes anonymized. Further, everyone within that scope can communicate with one another, but once users move in and out of the local areas, the communication obviously changes. It almost feels like you become a sneaky anonymous person. It's like we have become the NSA. Or is McAfee the NSA? Uh-oh, is McAfee the NSA? And now it's time for... What? What? Here's something that seriously looks like a scary caterpillar. Yeah, doesn't it? A 3D printed toothbrush that says it can clean your teeth in six seconds. It was on the front page of Reddit Tech all week. Blizzardent, something that sounds like Snoop Dogg would have come up with, is shaped like your teeth. Dentists take a digital scan of the teeth and then use that to determine the optimal placement of the bristles by biting and chewing movements. It's a $300 toothbrush. I read a lot about what actual dentists and oral hygienists had to say about this. Quick version, zero out of 10 recommend. Brushing for two minutes, this is not tech, but whatever. Brushing for two minutes is for a very specific purpose. The fluoride in your toothpaste cannot soak deep enough into your teeth and gums unless it is in your mouth long enough. Monsieur, the bartender that also is a machine, that's also a robot, that's also freaking expensive. He learns thousands of drinks and can expertly craft them at the touch of a button. Some funny things it does. You know, with the price means it comes with some rather ridiculous perks. Order drinks from your sofa, because getting up is out of the question. The thing is your personal butler. He knows when you're home from work and can make you a double rather than a single. He knows if you've got a date over and offers her a cocktail too. He monitors drinking consumption and when your blood alcohol level is high, he helps you hail a cab. A cab to your own bed? Onward, it was the first time I heard of Silk Road, but it's basically a drug selling website and it just got shut down. FBI got him. Basically, you can look for any drug you could possibly imagine. Drugs are bad. And then pay with Bitcoin, the virtual currency, which is very hard to monitor. Anyway, the guy had generated more than 1.2 BN via the Silk Road. I'm assuming that means Bitcoin money and a lot of it. And a second document showed private communications from Silk Road's computer server, suggesting that the suspect had been willing to pursue violent means to defend his interests. That's why you don't go the Heisenberg direction, bro. Have you not learned anything? Well, this week's news has been crazy. Definitely couldn't fit everything in that I wanted. Anyone have their own opinions about John McAfee? Weirdo, huh? Silk Road, did anyone know about the site before the news? Anything else you care to comment on, feel free. Click that like button. Click. Oops. <laughs> What does the fox say?